Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Now in my previous video, I tried to raise awareness on the fact that the GTX 1650 laptops are kind of outdated in 2022. And basically in my frank opinion, the GTX 1650 is actually outdated. And going forward, it is absolutely not worth it in my opinion, especially if you're spending 60 to 65,000 rupees. In India, prices are always quite inflated, but still I believe that paying a little bit extra and going for an RTX 3050 is worth the money because it's a new technology. Whereas a GTX 1650 is outgoing technology and it is not going to be worth it going forward anymore. Now, I did say that I'm going to come up with a list of best RTX 30 laptops that are worth buying because an RTX 30 laptop can be quite tricky to purchase because of the varying power limits as well as the fact that some manufacturers charge a lot of money for an RTX 30 laptop, which is not worth it. So in this video, I have come up with the list of the best RTX 30 laptops that are worth buying. So before we get to that list, I do want to iterate some of the benefits of an RTX 3050 over a GTX 650 because it's it's important to know that. So First, let's talk about the difference between RTX 3050 and a GTX 650. So first of all, let's talk about CUDA cores. So the RTX 3050 has 2048 CUDA cores, which is double the number of CUDA cores present in the GTX 650, the regular model, the 50 watt variant, uh, which has 1024 CUDA cores. Basically, the RTX 3050 has double that. And as a result, the RTX 3050 is quite a bit faster for gaming performance and the RTX 3050 also has 16 ray tracing cores and 64 tensor cores so these benefit in a bunch of ways in terms of AI and you know deep learning and stuff like that and as well as in ray tracing although I do not recommend ray tracing on an RTX 3050 and finally both the GTX 650 and the RTX 3050 both have 4 gigabytes of GDDR6 graphics memory so obviously spec for spec the RTX 3050 is a pretty big jump over the GTX 650 now, in terms of power limits, it is quite important. Now, the GTX 650 is mostly available in the 50 watt variant, that is a fixed power limit of 50 watts, whereas the RTX 3050 is available in a multiple in multiple flavors. So it starts from 35 watt or 40 watt, which is available in the MSI GF63, and it goes all the way up to 80 watt plus 5 watt with dynamic boost, so up to 85 watts. And most of the RTX 30 laptops available in the market is in the 75 watt range, so 70 watts to 5 watt extra with dynamic boost now one thing to keep in mind is that a 40 watt rtx 3050 is actually quite a bit slower than a 75 watt rtx 3050 uh, but a 75 watt rtx 3050 is not much slower than an 85 watt rtx 3050 because about 65 to 70 watt the it is enough to feed all the 2048 CUDA cores and get them to a maximum clock speed. So going up to 85 watt isn't that much of an upgrade it's like a let's say a couple of fps here and there so it's good that most of the RTX 3050 laptops available in the market are the 75 watt variant, which is good. Okay, now apart from the basic spec differences, uh, there are a bunch of upgrades that you will get when you get to an RTX 3050 or an RTX GPU. Uh, so number one benefit is that you get access to deep learning super sampling or DLSS. Now DLSS is a great feature. Uh, basically, uh, what happens is that the game is rendered at a lower resolution and then using deep learning models, uh, the game is then upscaled to the native resolution of your display, which means you get higher FPS because the game is actually being rendered at a lower resolution. And then the AI cores uh, of the uh, RTX cards upscale it using the deep learning models to the native resolution of your display. And as a result, you don't see any image quality loss. Yes, obviously there is some image quality loss at 1080 especially, but the difference is acceptable and the performance boost that you get is well worth it. So having DLSS is a big boost to any RTX card. Second is you get access to those ray tracing cores and also your tensor cores for you know your deep learning applications. So any kind of machine learning applications that you want to use will be much better with an RTX card. The RTX card can also take advantage of the all the AI and deep learning functions to provide stuff like RTX voice. RTX voice will is an amazing feature when it comes to removing background noise. So for example, I'm making video in this open room and a lot of noise is going on everywhere around this construction going on. If I had an RTX card, I would be able to really very easily remove all these background noise and uh, get a really clean audio uh, recording. So RTX voice is a great thing. And also ray tracing cards also allow you to use that background blur feature so you can blur your backgrounds uh, in a really effective way because of this uh, deep learning feature. And then you also got features like 
the latest version of the NVENC encoder which means your gameplay recordings will be even more efficient there will be barely any hit to your performance and you'll be able to record your display your record your game gameplay sessions very effectively at high quality and you also get access to the optics rendering engine so if you're using something like blender you'll be able to take advantage of optics rendering which means your 3d modeling performance will be amazing optics is a great feature for 3d modeling and you'll be taking and you'll be able to use it in your uh, rtx gpus so that's great so all these quality of life improvements that is brought about with rtx cards is well worth the money in my opinion especially given the fact that the gtx 650 is quite old and lacks a bunch of these features so with that out of the way let's get to the best value for money rtx 3050 laptops so the first laptop that i want to talk about is the lenovo ideapad gaming 3 now at 69,490 rupees or about 70,000 rupees this is the cheapest laptop to feature a fully powered RTX 3050. It's an 80 watt RTX 3050 and it goes up to 85 watt with dynamic boost. So that's great. The price is perfect. 5600H is the CPU which means you have no problem with CPU bottlenecks. Uh, 5600H is great, it's very fast as well as it is very efficient. Well the main con of this laptop is the fact that this packs a very small battery of 45 watt hour so the ryzen 5600 is being power efficient is quite important because you can still ma somewhat manage you know four five hours of battery life using you know all the optimizations like battery saving mode and you know disabling background apps and all that you can still somewhat manage a good battery life with this laptop not good but i would say like you know four to four and a half five hours you can manage with this laptop so that's the biggest call on this laptop is the fact that it just comes with a 45 watt hour battery However, in terms of performance, you will have no issues with the 5600H and an 85W RTX 3050. So yeah, the Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming 3 is well worth the money. Right, so the next laptop that I want to talk about is this. It's the Dell G15. It's the newer Dell G15. Now, this laptop is available sometimes around at 70,000 rupees and it goes up to 75,000 rupees, which has a 16GB RAM variant. Now, this laptop also features a fully powered RTX 3050 and at 70,000 rupees, it might be quite worth the money now with the dell laptops the main con is that uh they have a really high thermal uh, you know uh, throttling point which is about 100 degrees centigrade most of the dell g series laptops they can get quite hot up to 100 degrees centigrade but the dell engineers say that it is fine but uh, you know it's up to you however i really like the design of this laptop it looks quite a bit attractive and i like the you know off-white color and the the black and white you know uh, finish i love the design of this laptop so again it's called a 5600h and uh uh rtx 3050 fully powered one so uh you know in terms of performance this will be great so once again if you prefer having a dell laptop you like their service and all that and you like the design then again the dell g15 is worth the money especially at seventy thousand rupees okay moving on this is a tough f15 uh now i have always recommended this laptop so it comes with two variants one is a 15.6 inch variant and one is a 17.1 inch variant something like that so it's the tough f15 or you can say the f17 now in my opinion this is one of the best balanced configurations for any laptop that's because it's got an intel core i5 11400 which is one of the fastest six core cpus it is actually slightly faster than a 5600 although it takes a lot more power it has a Thunderbolt 4 port, which is amazing. If you want to use this laptop in the future, when the GPU will be outdated, you can connect an external GPU, which is great. You can also connect high speed displays to it. You can connect high speed Thunderbolt docks to it. Thunderbolt 4 is a great value added feature. In terms of the GPU, it has a 75 watt RTX 3080. Once again, it is plenty fast. You won't feel much difference with the RTX 3080, 85 watt versus 75 watt. So 75 watt RTX 3080 is enough. It has a 90 watt hour battery. Now, since the CPU is a little bit power hungry, the 11400H, the 90 watt hour battery really helps to give you decent battery life. Although a Ryzen laptop will probably match this one in terms of battery life. So, uh, you know, give or take. If you can really undervolt this laptop and, you know, uh, optimize it really well, then probably you'll get pretty good battery life with this laptop. So, yeah, the ASUS Tough F17 and the F15, great value for money. Um, well-rounded laptops highly recommend i've always been recommending this laptop so yeah uh, overall this laptop doesn't have too many cons i mean it packs everything literally for the price it's perfect now finally i want to talk about this it's the hp victus with the rtx 3050 ti now it is selling for 73,000 rupees and obviously every laptop in that i've told you is applicable with extra card discounts and all that so you can bring the price lower 
Now, the reason I am talking about an RTX 3050 Ti laptop is that generally these RTX 30 Ti laptops are not worth it because a lot of companies charge a lot of money for an RTX 30 Ti. Mostly it's above 80,000 rupees, 85,000 rupees, some charge even 90,000 and 1 lakh rupees for this. However, HP Victus is coming at just 73,000 rupees and the little boost with the RTX 30 Ti about, you know, an 8% boost or so is actually worth it because HP is not charging a lot of money for this. And this HP also comes with the 5600 inch and a 144 as display. It also has a 70 watt hour battery. So Ryzen combination with a 70 watt hour battery you mean, means you get great battery life. You also get an awesome port selection. You get uh, HDMI 2.1 and you also get a display port support through the Type-C port which means you can connect two displays with this laptop easily. Plus, all the USB ports in this laptop is USB 3.1 variety, which means fast USB ports. And by the way, guys, I have actually reviewed the RX 5500M Victus on my channel, so you can go and watch that. It is a great all rounder laptop. The main drawback of the other Victus is that they come with 60 display. However, this Victus actually comes with a 144 display, which was its only weakness. So, this HP Victus looks like one of the best laptop choices under the 75,000 rupees category because it not only packs a 5600H and RTX 3050 Ti combination it also has a big battery 75 watt hour it also has 144 as display which was absent from the other victors when they launched so overall as a package this thing looks great so if you want to spend 70,000 rupees so it depends upon you whether you have the budget or not or you can use card offers to bring the price down further but at 70,000 rupees you cannot go wrong with this victors so overall, these were my choice uh, for the best RTX 30 d laptops that are worth the money. There are other laptops, but they charge a lot. So I feel these are the best options available at the moment. So yeah, that was it, guys. Uh, these were my favorite choices with the RTX 30 d laptops. So if you want to purchase any of these laptops, yeah, the links are down in the description. Please consider buying from these links as that helps out the channel a lot. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, do let me know what you think about the GTX 650 versus RTX 3050 situation at this point. Do you want to spend the extra money to the RTX 3050 laptops or you're sticking with 650? So yeah, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.